What's up my giblets? This is Sai again, giving you another replay. This is going to be one of my own games this time. None of that uh, live stuff this time around. I'm still working out the kinks with fraps and my video editing software and stuff like that. And so I'm not too confident that it'll run smoothly every time. But here we go. I'm playing against Indy, the red Protoss in the west side of the map, and I am the blue Zerg in the bottom portion of the map. I don't know the map name, actually. I always forget the map name, but it doesn't matter. You guys know what map this is, probably. It's kind of similar to Lost Temple. Not really. I don't know why I even said that. But here we go. I'm sending my Overlord in the right direction, and I'm actually watching my Overlord very closely, and I'm going to fast expand, and so what I'm going to do is, if I do see the toss, I'm going to turn back right away. And uh, we'll see if I can, if he sees me or not. So I'm going to see him in a second here. And yeah, this is a cool trick. Holding V allows you to see the vision of the other uh, player, of whoever you're selecting. But let's see if he can see me or not. Um, no, looks like I did it just perfect. So he does not know that I've scouted him. So I know where he hit, he is. He does not know where I am. This is going to make fast expanding even easier. But look at this. He, he has the same idea in mind. It looks like he's going to get a forge or something down there. Most Protoss would build up here with a gateway. Yep, there he goes. Uh, they build a gateway up here and create a small choke. Small choke, two words you don't hear me say quite often in the same sentence. But anyway, he is forge fast expanding. And I'm going to scout this in just a little bit, actually. And in my opinion, if a Zerg expands as Protoss, you don't want to forge fast expand because Zerg can saturate so much faster. So once I do find out that he is fast expanding, I just go all out on the drones, man. And we'll check out the harvester count here in a little bit and see if, you know, I am correct about getting way more drones than him. But finally, this probe is coming into my base. He is seeing, uh, does he see my expansion? Yeah, it looks like he does see my expansion there. And he's seeing my spawning pool going down. But of course, he does not have a gateway. He's getting his nexus now. He doesn't have a gateway, so he can't really do any harassing. So I didn't know this, but I didn't really have to pump out a lot of lings. I think I end up getting about six lings or so. But when you do, do, when you do a fast expand like this as Zerg, you want to stockpile a lot of minerals. Because you're going to have to get you know either two or four lings at your main hatch, uh, two lings at your secondary hatchery, and... B Queens at both of them. I don't care what HD says. I don't care what anyone says. Any commentators say you do need two queens if you're going to do the fast expansion build. It's just too good. There's so much larva, and you can just pump out the drones. I've watched all the high-level replays. Idra, you know, uh, Idra, other Zerg players. I don't remember the names of. I only remember Idra because he beat me once, and he does go double queen as well. But here we go. Queens getting pumped out. Zerglings looks like I do have four at my main. Uh, not yet getting up. Oh, there's my gas. Yep, getting a gas up. And I'm going to go a quick lair tech here once I do see this forge coming in. First cannon and his first gateway. So he is just letting a Zerg player who fast expanded do whatever he wants right now. You know, I could even take another base right here. I could take the high yield. And I would be pretty safe for a while just because I can mass so many numbers even if he decides to do like a mid game, you know, zealot sentry push or something weird like that. First cannon is go. His first cannon is down. He's kind of shooing my zerglings away. So I'm gonna go around and see what I can see here. I already know he's fast expanding just because of the nature of this setup right here. Two more leagues joining. Two more lings joining my uh, his friends right here. And you see me maneuvering them around the back. He doesn't have a cannon. They're protecting his probe. So uh, you know, if anything, I'll take out a probe or two and delay his mining. So I am able to kill that probe gonna attack the nexus a little bit but this second cannon is morphing in and the zealot is coming in to uh, shoot those zerglings away so there they go and look at this I am just focusing on massive saturation all these are drones and with my first hundred minerals I'm my first hundred gas I am getting a layer so you're gonna see some uh, tech here what am I gonna get with my layer well you'll see in a second here and I've already got quite a few drones on the expansion it's not often you get to saturate it that fast but you know, we're both just kind of working on the harvester games. So let's check out the harvesters. I've got 30. He's got 23. So I've got a huge resource lead right now. This is what happens. Hatcheries can pump out drones a lot faster. So you want to put some pressure on as Protoss and Force Zerg to get some units. And so they won't be getting harvesters. But <laughs> check this out. I'm getting five more, uh, four more drones. Five more drones. I'm now ahead in harvesters by 12, 13, 14 harvesters. My minerals and gas are killing him. And what does he have to show for it? Just three zealots. So already I'm taking a lead just because of his poor uh, macro choices, I guess. 
now ahead on by 17 on harvesters and putting up my spire here. I have three gas going. Looks like I'm getting a fourth gas to try to support this heavy mutabil I'm going to be uh, getting. Sending a probe out. I don't know what this probe is doing. I guess he's just uh, getting a regular intel report to see if I'm going any specific unit or not. But my spine crawler should be able to take this probe out in two shots. Smack. Smack. And dead. Geyser finished. Need to transfer some drones onto that geyser. There we go. I am watching my bases pretty carefully at this point, it seems. Uh, I should actually be putting down some other tech. Because I am so heavy in resources, you know, why not put down a Roach Warren? Why not? There we go. There's the Roach Warren. And why not put down a Hydra Den, you know, in case I might need them? It's a very small cost to pay to have that tech ready for if you do, you know, need it in a pinch. Here he is sending five Zealots and a Sentry at me. He only saw my spine crawler, so he's hoping that's all I have, but, you know, <laughs> five zealots and a sentry, even if they do catch me off guard, like, right now, and kill my spine crawler, I could just pump out units so fast, they wouldn't do that much damage, so this is kind of a silly timing attack here. I am able to get quite a few lings, and, uh, shoot him away, he saw those lings, and there's that dreaded force field again. Luckily, I'm going air, so it won't affect any kind of reinforcements I try to send, because I am pumping mutas out now. Roach Warren did come up, need to inject here, doing an okay job, still have 25 extra resources, but I'm putting up my creep tumors as well, I've found those to be very effective, especially since you have two queens, you just, you don't need all the larvae constantly, but you can afford a creep tumor, just to kind of expand things out. It's also kind of a psychological battle, whenever a Terran or a Protoss like walk into creep tumors, they kind of, you know, they second guess themselves, should I really go, look at all this goo, this might get my boots wet. Let's check out the income here again. Still ahead by him by 13 harvesters. I don't know if he's 